Clue Network. To edify, to encourage, to upskill. This is Christian Life Upskill with Ifai of Hong Subscribe now. Hi, you're going to Clue, Christian Life Upskill. My name is Ifai Okonkwa. In this video, I want to share with us very briefly on the blessings of redemption. I want to show the blessings of redemption. You know, the word redemption <coughs> is a transactional term. You know, <coughs> it's something we use for transaction, redemption in the old. It's more of an old use of English, you know, and it has to do with exchange. It has to do with transaction. You know, <coughs> man sold himself to to devil in the book of Genesis when he disobeyed God. You know, and God sent Christ to to redeem man. You know that that transactional to, to that 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 transactional arrangement was called redemption. So we heard the word redemption plan. You know, and that was what God did to bring man back to his place. Hallelujah. So we call it redemption. <clears throat> Glory to God. So it has to do with transaction, exchange, buying. You know, so but there are blessings of redemption. These are the things I want to be sharing with us in this video. Yes, God sent Christ, you know, to, to die for our sin and to, <clears throat> to take our place and to be the exchange. And this is what we refer to as redemption. You know? So before I begin to go forward, I want to share just one or two scriptures with us, very beautiful scriptures. The book of um, Ephesians chapter 1, if you read from 5, very beautiful. You know, he said, 5 said, you know, <clears throat> having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. Six says, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Hallelujah. He has made us accepted. The word therefore accepted is the word charito. Glory to God. The word here is the word charito. You know, this word charito was only used twice in the whole New Testament. And charito means to be favored. This was the same language that that the angel used, Gabriel used when he went when he went to Mary and says, "You are highly favored." You know, this was the same. This is the same language that Paul is using to describe the church. He says, "We are highly favored." Glory to God. And you know, he says, "We are accepted in the beloved." And seven says, "In whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to riches of His grace." Hallelujah. He says, "In whom." We have redemption through his blood, <clears throat> the forgiveness of sins. Now, when you begin to read through the New Testament, Testament, you find out that there are many words that are used to describe um, redemption. You know, the first is what you saw here, in whom we have redemption through his blood. The word here for redemption is the word apolut apolutrosis, from the word lutro. And what is lutro? Lutro means to ransom, to pay ransom. Glory to God. So Bible says, in whom we have redemption, in whom we have our ransom through his blood. So the ransom for our sin was the blood of Jesus. So Bible says, in whom we have redemption, ransom, apolutrosis, or the word lutro, in whom we have lutro through the blood of Jesus, even the forgiveness of our sins. So we have redemption because of the blood. So the blood of Jesus was that ransom. The word is apolutrosis, or from the word lutro, which means to, to ransom, to pay for something. Hallelujah. You know, like somebody is kidnapped and you're asked to pay particular money. That, that, word, that money you pay is the word ransom. Hallelujah. So the blood of Jesus was the ransom for our sin. Glory to God. So the word is apolutrosis. Then there's another word that is used to describe redemption. We saw it in the book of Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. We know where Paul was writing and says, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. Then he went further to say, the curse is everyone that is signed on the tree, that the blessings of Abraham <coughs> might come on the Gentiles, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. He says, Christ has redeemed us. You know, the word here for redeem is the word exagorazo. 
Exagorazo means to buy. Whereas Lutro means to pay a ransom. Exagorazo means to buy. Hallelujah. So that we says Christ has bought us. Hallelujah. We have been bought by him. Glory to God. So, so he has bought us from the slave market of sin. Oh, glory to God. So we have been bought. Hallelujah. So we have been redeemed. You know, the, the subject of redemption is big. You know, it's very big. It's beyond forgiveness of sin. Even though it starts with forgiveness. Everything starts with forgiveness. Forgiveness is the mother of all blessings. You know, everything starts with forgiveness. But it's not just forgiveness. You know, but you have been redeemed. <clears throat> you have been redeemed from sin. But not just, just not just only from sin. We have also we have also been redeemed from poverty, you know. And poverty here is beyond um, um, have lacking basic necessity for, for 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 need for the things we need, food, shelter, and all that. Why that is also very vital, you know. There's also poverty of the mind, poverty of the spirit, where man is um, morally bankrupt, where man has. You know, lacks the the necessary you know strength to do the will of God. So you see, Paul talking in the book of Romans chapter seven, the things I want to do I can't do. The things I don't want to do I see myself doing. That is poverty. That is poverty of the spirit. He couldn't do the things that God wanted him to do. Hallelujah. You see, because man, in, but you know, Je Jeremiah was talking. He says the heart of man is desperately wicked. He said, who can know this? So man in himself cannot help himself. Jeremiah chapter 10 verse 23 says, you know, it is not in man to order his steps. So man is weak to do the things that God wants him to do. Hallelujah. So that is poverty. So the coming of Jesus has brought us that liberty. Hallelujah. To do the will of God. You know, man himself cannot do, man in himself cannot do the will of God. You know, always opposes God. And this is what God got man into trouble in the first place. Hallelujah, you know, so so the, the coming of Christ, redemption has brought us to that place where we can freely do the things that God wants us to do. Glory to God. <clears throat> Hallelujah. So, so we have been redeemed from poverty, you know, and not, not just poverty of the spirit now, but wealth. Hallelujah. So there is wealth for us. So Bible says Christ has redeemed us of the cost of the law. One of the cause of this law is poverty. So Bible says, for we know the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, even though he was, he was rich, but for our sake he became poor, so that through his poverty we might become rich. Hallelujah. So we have been brought into that place of wealth. Remember in the back in the book of Genesis chapter 2, when man disobeyed God, Bible says God caused the earth for man's sake. God didn't cause the God didn't cause man. The Bible says God caused the earth for man's sake. And from that day, you know, man could no longer walk in wealth. Hallelujah. Because the earth was caused because of man. God did not cause man, but God caused the earth for man's sake. Hallelujah. But redemption has brought us into that place of wealth. Glory to God. To that place of riches. Hallelujah. So we must accept the truth because it is true. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Another blessings of redemption, very, very beautiful is you know the 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 health redemption of healing and health you know the overall expression or eternal um death was the eternal overall punishment for man's sin hallelujah was the overall result of man's disobedience but there was natural expression of the disobedience you know and and it came in the place of pain in the place of sickness and in place of disease and all that. <clears throat> Hallelujah. So, so because of man's disobedience, sin, Bible says sin came in and death came in by sin. And it brought a lot of other things. Sickness, pain, you know. So, so in front of in the Old Testament, when God made the law, you know, Exodus 23, verse 25, God gave them a promise. You know, he says, If thou shalt serve me, I will bless your water and your bread. I will take away sickness away from you. You know, it's so very important to understand the word take away. You know, the word is sore, and which means to turn off. So in the Old Testament, God told them, if you do the things I want you to do, I'm going to turn off sickness from the midst of you, like to turn up a tap. So the take away there is not total taking away. It was turn off. I will take away. I will turn off sickness from the midst of you. Hallelujah. So God, in the Old Testament, when they obeyed the law, God turned off sickness from the midst of them. It was not taken away. Hallelujah. It was on the cross that Jesus took away our sin, not just our sin, he took away our sickness. Bible says, in his own body, he bore 
our sin and sickness. He bore our pain. Hallelujah. So redemption also brought us to that place of healing where we can demand for healing. Bible says, by whose tribe we are healed. Glory to God. So redemption has brought us to that place of not just healing now, but staying in health. Hallelujah. Staying in total health. Hallelujah. Staying in total health. So Bible says, by whose tribe you are healed. So by the stripe of Jesus on the cross, we have been made to walk in not just healing, but divine health. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And then <clears throat> another blessing, and the final blessing I want to talk about on the blessings of redemption is, you know, redemption from death. Now, <clears throat> it's so important to be going to point out, I, want to, I don't want to use the word um, um, physical death or spiritual death. I just want to use the word death. Because a lot of times, <clears throat> when, they, when we talk about the word death, a lot of time, you know, preachers try to only make it spiritual death. Spiritual death, you know. And reading the Bible is difficult to convince me otherwise. And what, what am I trying to say? The redemption that Jesus purchased for us on the cross, his death on the cross was not just supposed to save us from spiritual death alone. It was supposed to save us from physical death. And this is what I want to say about this. In the book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, verse 17, when God began to speak to Adam, he says, In the day that thou eatest of this fruit, he one day, in the day that thou eat of this fruit, he says, Thou shalt surely die. Hallelujah. Thou shalt surely die. So, so Romans chapter 5 verse 12 says, As by one man's offense, sin came into this world, and death came in by sin. And death was passed to all men, for all are sinned. Hallelujah. God said, in the day you eat of this fruit, you will surely die. So, the primary thing that came in because of man's disobedience was death. I repeat, the primary thing that came in because of man's disobedience to God in the book of Genesis was death. And when I mean death, both physical, both spiritual, whatever that you want to call it, it was death. Death came in. So we saw the book of um, uh, Romans chapter 5 verse 12. You know, we saw what God told him in the book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 17. So death came in. It's not just spiritual death. I'm talking about physical death. So when Jesus came and saved us and redeemed us, packaged in redemption is also redemption from physical death. That is the truth. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 8 verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walks not after the flesh, but after the spirit. The one for that to say, for the law of the spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus, has made me free from the law of sin and death. From the law of sin and death. The day you eat of this fruit, you shall surely die. And Bible says, Jesus came. To free us from that sin and death. So if sin has been taken away, which is true, it also means the consequences of sin has also been taken away, which is death. The day you eat of this fruit, you shall surely die. Hallelujah. And when they ate, sin came in and Jesus came to take away our sin. So if our sin is taken away, it means the consequences of sin, which is death, has also been taken away. This is the truth. Hallelujah. But a lot of time we make it look spiritual. Spiritual. No, it's, there is also physical death. Glory to God. You know, Jesus understood this truth when I was talking to Martha. You know, it looks big, it looks difficult to believe, but it's true. Jesus was talking to Martha who, after Lazarus had died in the book of um, John chapter 11. You know, Martha said, If you have been here earlier on, my brother would not have died. Jesus says, Your brother will rise again. He said, Yes, in the resurrection by and by. And then Jesus told him in verse 25, I am the resurrection and life. Anyone who believes in me, even though he dies, he will live again. And he went further to say, anyone who is alive now and believe in me shall not die. And he went further to ask Martha, do you believe this? Of course, Martha did not believe. She could not phantom that truth. Hallelujah. Anyone who is... Now, the context of this story is not spiritual death. It was Lazarus that is just lying in the tomb for this dead. So the context is not a spiritual. 
he's a physical guy that got sick and jesus was called upon and jesus did not show up on time and then when jesus showed up she was telling him if you had come earlier on my brother would not have died so the contest is not spiritual it is physical glory to god and and jesus told him anyone who believes in me even though he's dead he will live again and even though he's and if he's alive now and believes he cannot die he will not die say do you believe so you, you don't follow that this story hinges on belief hallelujah do we believe this truth the church do not believe this truth and that is why we don't teach it hallelujah but packaged in redemption is also redemption from death hallelujah i'm going to read another scripture for us from the book of first Timothy chapter one sorry second Timothy chapter one i'm going to read from seven eight and nine so second Timothy chapter chapter one verse nine said who hath saved us and has called us with an holy calling not according to our works but according to his own purpose and grace which was given us a christ jesus before the world began and ten says but now but is now made manifest by the appearance of our savior jesus christ who hath abolished death who hath abolished death hallelujah who hath abolished death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel bible says that christ hath abolished death and has brought into life into light life and immortality life and immortality life and immortality glory to god life and immortality life and immortality so the appearance of christ bible says as about the word there for abolish is the word katagio katagio means to destroy katagio means to render useless glory to god katagio means to destroy and to render useless so bible says christ has rendered useless death and has brought into light life and immortality what is immortality living and not dying the word in the greek is the word aphthesia aphthesia means unending existence and he also speaks of incorruptibility glory to god living and not the word is immortality immortality only means one thing living and not dying hallelujah in this body so what says the coming of christ has brought to light life and immortality so it's a truth that has come because of the gospel hallelujah life and immortality a life to those who are dead and then immortality to those who are alive so when i believe in jesus christ according to the package of redemption i am not supposed to die that is the truth according to these scriptures as they have been reading to us now i just read john chapter 11 verse 25 I just read 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9 and 10. I just read Romans chapter 8, verse 1, 2, and 3. Hallelujah. So, to see this truth. But Paul made it a bit more clearer. He says, Christ, the coming of Christ, has abolished the was katagio and has brought into light life and immortality, living and not dying. So, when a believer is born again, he is saved from sin, he is saved from sickness, he is also supposed to be saved from death. So, the question has always been, if this is true, why are Christians not living up? Why are Christians still dying? Christians are still dying for the same reason that Christians still fall sick. For the same reason that Christians are still poor. For the same reason that Christians are still lacking. For the same reason that Christians are still diseased. Sometimes we have teachings that are not strong on this area. Christians will continue to, you know, the faith comes by hearing. You know and and hearing by the word of god so the, we believe based on what we hear you know paul was writing the book of romans chapter 10 he says how can they believe there's no preacher to preach to them so if there's no teaching along this line christians will not really know what is what has been made available to us as believers there are things that are made available to us and they are enormous hallelujah so christians die for the same reason that christians fall sick for this for the same reason that sick christians are still lack for the same reason that they are still diseased you know, for the same reason that they are still like every other human being, you know, 
is for the same reason also that they die. Why? Because there's no enough teaching. Hallelujah. How many preachers preach on this truth? Very few preachers talk about this, you know, because we don't, we have not really grasped that truth. But I believe that a generation is going to come that is going to accept this truth about redemption. And that is redemption of living and not dying. Glory to God. Because it's part of our package. So Jesus says, For God so loved the world, you know, that he sent his only begotten so that who that believes in him should not perish. So God does not want, you know, every time we use the word perish, we, also, we always figure out that, you know, it has to do with hell. No, it also means our body. God does not want us to perish. Hallelujah. So the Bible says, the coming of Christ has brought life and immortality through the gospel. Hallelujah. So Jesus says, he that believes in me now shall not die. Hallelujah. And I believe this truth. And I believe, as we begin to, you know, emphasize on some of this truth, a generation is going to rise that will believe this truth, that will teach this truth. You know, and until it's been taught enough, Christians will not believe it. Hallelujah. Do I believe it? It's going to be difficult to convince me otherwise that the redemption, the redemption package that Christ brought for us, that life and not dying is not included. Because I just showed us scriptures that portrays the fact that part of the redemption package is living and not dying. Hallelujah. And you must believe it. So Jesus asks Martha, do you believe it? You know, the answer that Martha gave to Christ suggests that he didn't believe it. Hallelujah. And most Christians do not believe it. But it's true. So in my teaching this morning, this, in this video is just to you know make open our eyes to redemption truth that has been unveiled to us. Redemption, the blessings available in redemption. Yes, there's sickness. Yes, there's healing for sickness. Yes, there's forgiveness of sins. But most, most importantly, it's living and not dying. Not to see corruption. Hallelujah. And I believe that our generation is that generation that is going to live and enjoy immortality. Because that is part of the redemption that God has made available for us. These are the things I want to share with us in this video. And please, if you have not subscribed to my channel, I will encourage you to subscribe to my channel to like, turn on post notification, and to share with your friends. Thank you so very much for taking the time to watch this video. Until I see you in my next video, thank you so very much and God bless you. Shalom.